Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope everyone is doing well. Had a fantastic week. And I am talking to you guys today specifically about home lab hardware, home lab servers. I recently pulled the trigger on another Supermicro server for my home lab environment. And I wanted to share with you guys some of the reasons that I use these particular Supermicro servers in my home lab environment. If you're looking around for a server for your home lab environment and are unsure of what to purchase, stick around. I think you're going to enjoy this video as I go through a few of the details of my home lab as well as this new server that I have configured. Let's dive right in. I wanted you to meet the newest addition to my home lab server environment, Supermicro Xeon D2146 NT system on chip processor powered home lab servers. And these are actually classified as edge servers, edge data center servers, embedded slash IOT servers from Supermicro. And they fit the bill extremely well. And I have been using these servers and similar from Supermicro for quite some time now. And I have many reasons for that. These servers are extremely powerful for their size. They have a lot of enterprise capabilities built in, such as uh, built in IPMI, which is out of band management, and just the real enterprise -y feel to the hardware and some of the add on solutions that you can buy from Supermicro. Just a level set, this is not a Supermicro sponsored video, although I would welcome that from Supermicro, especially as much as I love their servers. Uh, but it's simply for me and my home lab environment and my use cases and needs. The super micro servers have really worked well for the workloads that I have wanted to run in my home lab environment. So next, I wanted to take you guys through taking a look at the insides of the super micro server, the add on card that I have added, how I've mounted the hard drive inside of the chassis of the unit and a few other details. This particular super micro server is the super micro Sys E309D. Uh, so it's a system on chip home lab server. I just want to tell you guys, I really love these uh, super micro servers for my particular home lab. They're very efficient and very small footprint, and they've got a lot of processing power features and other nice to haves for a home lab. I wanted to kind of go through this E309D with you guys, uh, show you the insides, show you how I've got drives mounted and some of the features on the internals. I have the rack mount brackets on the side. So I bought those as an add-on kit. I'm gonna be able to mount that in my home lab rack. So let's uh, take off the top cover and I'll show you guys on the inside. Okay, so this is the inside plate or cover that covers over the internals of the server. And this slides this way, so it slides towards the front. Here you will, once you have the top cover off, you have the internals exposed. And so what I've done, the this top inner plate actually comes with uh, the hole patterns for uh, hard drive mounting. So you can mount a hard drive here, you can mount a hard drive here. And also there's uh, holes here. So three separate locations where you can mount hard drives. I have added the Supermicro add-in card M2 NVMe. Uh, so if you wanna see that video where I describe my NVMe setup for vSAN, I talk about this card. Uh, so this, I configured this server with the riser card and this particular riser card allows you to add the PCIe slot card. So that's what I've done. I've added the riser card. You can't see the NVMe drives as it's flipped over uh, to the underneath side. I had this server configured with 128 gigs of memory. I've got uh, two 32s here and two 32s here. So that, that's a memory configuration. Again, the Xeon D2146 uh, NT processor system on chip proc eight cores, 16 threads. I have uh, a lot of other servers in my particular home lab uh, set up with uh, the Xeon D system on chip processors. And I, I have really loved those in the home lab for efficiency purposes. And they just 
perform. Uh, they really carry the workloads that I have thrown at them uh, with no issues. Uh, and I have a lot of VMs running in the home lab environment. So I just wanted to show you guys how uh, I have that configured on the inside. I know the wiring is kind of messy. I just threw this together last night and got the wiring in there and the drive mounted. Uh, but that's, that's how the internals look. One of the great things about these units that I really love is the wealth of networking that they have. These have six 1 gig ports as well as two 10 gig SFP ports. This is a management port, which is another great feature of the Supermicro servers. They all have the built in out of band IPMI uh, management. So you've got complete out-of-band control of your Supermicro servers. So it's you've got remote console, you can mount virtual media, you can update firmware, BIOS, all of those things remotely and do that on the fly. It does require a, it's around $30 or $40. Uh, there's a license that you have to purchase for out-of-band firmware and BIOS management. However, you get all of the other features without the license. So that's how that works. But one of the things I really love about these units is the wealth of networking capabilities that they have with the gig ports as well as the 10 gig. It gives you a wide range of possibilities and how you want to structure your networking, how you want to set up your VLANs. Uh, if you want to use ports for vMotion, dedicated ports for vMotion, use the 10 gig slots for your virtual machine traffic as well as vSAN traffic or however you want to carve those up. I mean, it's really endless the possibilities. I'm a big fan of the converged networking uh, now with uh, vSAN and with the newer versions of vSphere. And converged networking just simply means you're uh, combining those different types of network traffic on very high bandwidth interfaces like 10 gig and higher. It gives you just a lot of possibilities with that. And this is kind of gonna be my play host that I'm going to use to uh, show you guys some basics with VMware vSphere, also with Proxmox, and also with uh, some Hyper-V configuration. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video overview of the new Supermicro server that I have added to my home lab fleet and some of the features that I really find to be extremely powerful and useful in the context of the home lab environment. What kind of server hardware are you guys purchasing for your home lab environments? Have you been affected by supply chain issues? Have you opted to build your own servers or are you buying commodity off the shelf hardware? Let me know in the comments. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. Please look forward to the future videos, which I'm going to be using this hardware very heavily. Please do subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you guys soon.